Hey guys, what's happening? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this review, I'm going to go over the Sony RX100 Mark 7. Now, this is the latest generation RX100 series camera, and it's basically the super ultra compact pro grade camera that Sony offers. In this review, I'm going to cover everything that you need to know from Sony Alpha Lab perspective, you know, real world user perspective. But before we get to that, Please do me a favor, below the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you feel like this video gave you what you were looking for, then do me a favor, do me a solid, give me a thumbs up. Also, below the video is going to be all the links. I created a ton of tutorials for this particular camera. Those links will be below the video, as well as a link to all the accessories I recommend for the RX100 Mark 7. Now, let's get on with the review. So the question you really need to ask yourself is, why would you want the Sony RX100 Mark 7? It goes for $1,300 US. Now, that's a lot of money. Why would you want this camera as opposed to a camera like the Sony a6400, which is what I'm recording with right now? $900 for that camera body, $1,300 for this camera body, and you could basically put any lens you want on that. Well, basically you're getting Sony A9 specs in this thing as far as 20 frames per second shooting. You're getting a 24 to 200 millimeter effective focal range lens. You're also getting the Exmor RS sensor, which is the highest quality sensor that Sony makes at this time, like the stack design. The Mark 7 offers a new feature that everybody's talking about, which is the mic input. That was a key feature that was missing. The A6400 also has a mic input, and it has a flip screen, just like this camera as well. But what you get is this incredible ultra compact design. Now you can literally fit this in your pocket. You see what I mean? It might be a little tight in your if you're wearing tight jeans, but looser jeans, it'll fit in your jean pocket. A jacket pocket, no problem. That's basically what you're getting, that incredible power in a super ultra compact size. People that would want that are people that are traveling on vacation and they don't want a heavy camera with a bag of lenses. 24 to 200 effective lens for a larger sensor camera like the a6400 or the a7 mark iii for example which are both killer cameras no question but the lenses weigh a lot more with that bigger sensor comes bigger glass it's a really good option for vloggers that are looking for a really high quality solution that does not weigh a lot because when you're vlogging a lot of times you're holding the camera out in front of you like this and it you know it, it's a burden on the arm it you know it bogs you down so like a light system like this is much easier to hold for an extended period of time. The Mark 7 also has incredible features that only the Sony A9 offers, and we're talking 20 frames per second blackout free shooting. So you could literally track a moving subject at 20 frames per second, it'll autofocus the entire time, and the screen won't go black in between shots. So that makes this camera a really good option for sports photography, believe it or not. Now, not necessarily low light sports because the lens is not as fast and with a smaller sensor, it's not quite as good in low light situations, but field sports, things like that, it's a really good option if your kid is in football, soccer, anything like that, and you really want to get good shots, but again, you don't want a big heavy camera. This is for you. If you want to go to concerts and things like that, and you want to get really good shots at concerts, baseball games, and you don't want to have that heavy burden. And also at concerts and stuff, they won't let you take big cameras in. This one you can kind of slip into something and you can get away with getting it in there. It records killer 4K video. This thing has high frame rate, super slow motion shooting. So if you're doing any kind of stunts or you just want to capture slow motion for whatever reason, you know, like a dog shaking, all those cool things, water splashing, this camera can do it. It's really powerful in that way. And it used to, the previous generation, you could only get five minute clips in 4K quality. Well, this one, they added a high temperature shutoff option in here. And when you set the camera to that, you can actually get unlimited recording basically until the battery dies or until the camera overheats. But tests have been done and it'll go over an hour. I recorded over 30 minutes with this thing in 4K and I didn't have any overheating problems. The battery actually died on me. So you can now get long clips with this in 4K, which was a serious concern or a serious negative, let's say, in previous generations. What I want to show you is what this can do in the real world. So you can use this for portraits. You can use this for landscapes. I already mentioned sports. 4K video. Vlogging. 
If you're a vlogger and you're looking for something that's ultra compact. It's an all-in-one solution that's extremely lightweight and extremely compact. So if you're looking for something like that, then this is a camera to consider. So a couple more features I wanted to mention about this camera when I'm speaking of how powerful it is in ProGrade, this camera also offers interval shooting, which is time-lapse photography. It has creative modes, picture profiles for advanced video users like S-Log3, so you can grade your video in post-processing. It has an HDMI out, so you can actually go to an external recording device if you want. The camera, of course, offers IAF, so you're going to get tack sharp eye focus shots of your kids, even when they're moving, and now it'll also do pets, so you can get crystal clear tack sharp shots of your dog, cat, and you don't have to worry about getting that focus point right on their eye. The camera will automatically track the eye of a moving animal or, or kid or person. It makes it so much easier to get super sharp shots. So your hit rate is extremely high. And that's what you get with a pro-grade camera like the Sony RX100 Mark VII. Now you also have other advanced modes like memory recall, panorama shooting. So you can get killer panorama shots. And it does a really good job stitching the images together. It's quite impressive. It also has advanced features like bracketing and things like that so you can get killer HDR photos with this camera. And I really like the OLED viewfinder. That's a great feature for bright conditions and another reason why this camera costs what it costs. This is a really high quality viewfinder. It looks awesome when you look through there. And then you also have this articulating screen. It goes like all the way down like so. And then it also flips out like this. And then it goes all the way up for selfie mode. Now a few downsides about the Sony RX100 Mark VII, which are important. The ergonomics on this camera kind of suck. So they do make this really nice grip that you can put on the side here that does help. I will have that linked below the video. And in addition to that, the battery life on this camera is pretty poor. It doesn't really last that long. You're, you're talking like an hour or two if you're recording video maximum, but it does have the ability to hook up a power supply battery and go into the USB port here and you can then power the camera from the power supply. So if you're doing extended recording and you just need more battery life, it won't charge the battery, but it will power the camera for you. Now it does not offer 4K at 60p unfortunately, which a lot of people want. It does not have a built-in ND filter unfortunately, like the RX100 Mark V or 5A they call it now. That has a built-in ND filter and a faster lens. That lens is a 24 to 70 millimeter effective f1.8 to f2.8. This again is 24 to 200 millimeter f2.8 to f4.5. So the lens is a little bit slower on this. If you need a faster lens and you're looking for the best low light option, the RX100 5A currently would be your best option, but that camera does not have a mic input. They'll probably come out with another model with the 24 to 70 millimeter lens and a mic input at some point in the future is my guess. But for now, this really is the best option overall if you have to just boil it all down, in my opinion. Another gripe that I have with this camera is when you have it mounted to a tripod, you can't access the battery door or memory card door. So if you have a tripod plate on there, it really sucks. There's just not much you can do about it. Now, I tend to hit the record button a few times by mistake. I created a ton of videos on this camera already going over the camera modes, how to use the camera for beginners. So if you just got this camera and you don't want to read the manual, check out the how to use video. It's a beginner oriented tutorial. I called it the beginner's guide. Check that out first. Watch the whole thing. It's like an hour long, but it'll go over the whole camera in detail. It'll tell you how to put the battery and the memory card and all that stuff and what all the buttons do, how to use them. I also have another video on autofocus. So it goes over all the autofocus settings for those looking to do sports and other things. Touch focus, because the camera offers touch to focus, which is killer for video. You can just touch the screen, it'll, it'll focus on one spot, touch the screen somewhere else, and it'll smoothly transition. All right, guys, so just going over the hands-on portion of this review, I just wanted to show you the RX100 Mark VII in my hands. So you can see how small this camera really is. You saw me holding it in front of the camera before, but here it is actually in my hands. And to get a closer look here on the side, this is the viewfinder release. You just pop that up and that'll automatically turn the camera on for you. Now this segment is going to be fairly brief on the camera because I have dedicated videos that go start to finish on how to set this up and I go over every single button and dial in detail. 
So this is just a quick hands-on overview. And there's the flash release. Now you can see on the front there is no filter thread, but they do make magnetic style solutions that will stick on there. I have them linked below the video in the description area, but there is no like official kit or anything from Sony. Now on the side here, I just wanted to show you the HDMI port. That's for hooking up to your TV or an external monitor. And then you have the multi-port USB. That's for charging the battery and also powering the camera with an external power source. And then up top here, you have the mic input. Now the weather sealing on this camera body is not really that good. These are just basically plastic doors that aren't really going to hold back much rain. You know, a light mist you could get out there, but I would not be using this camera in the rain, that is for sure. There's really no hardcore weather sealing or anything like that. On the back here, you have a nice thumb dial that you can turn, and it has a button in the center, and these are all buttons as well, directional pad. And you can see there's a shortcut if you hit the left side of the button to self timer and drive mode. That's the drive mode area. You got the menu button, record video button. You can also set the shutter to record during video if you want. That's an option in the menu, which I go over in much more detail on my other how to use the camera video. Now the on off button is right there as well. And now on the bottom of the camera, you have the tripod mount. And as I mentioned earlier, when you have you know, a tripod plate mounted there, you cannot access the memory card door and battery door. And this is where the battery and the memory card go. It's just an SD card clicks right in there like so. And the battery, got that little blue lock there. That clicks in there like so. And it's got a little slide lever here. And then we have the screen articulation, of course showed you already but show it you from here that's what it looks like in the back when it's in selfie mode and there it is in selfie mode I'm sorry the camera's a little messy here I'm playing around with it for weeks now now when you turn the camera on let's put it in auto mode here you can see you got a nice display there I have the grid mode on and you can also see the face detection is automatically detecting that face back there. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see what I mean. Pretty cool how that works. And it'll automatically lock on the eye. IAF is incredible. And if you go into the menu, just show you the menu quick, you can see you have the My Menu area, which is awesome. I added the Format Memory Card option. So you can load up the My Menu area with whatever feature you like, and you can get to it really easily. And this menu system is quite vast. So you basically have an upper deck and then a lower deck. So when you're on the upper deck, you can just scroll through these different master categories. And then if you go down, you now have one of 14 pages on camera one. And then you can scroll through all those individual pages. And again, lots and lots and lots of features in this camera. It's incredibly powerful. Like I said, pro-grade camera. So again, be sure to check out my other videos where I go over all these options, but this is just a quick camera body overview. And right now, just to let you know, I have the camera set to 4K quality at 24p, 100 megabits per second for the best quality. And that's how I'm recording my 4K video. So you can see here, I have it in full auto mode right now. And if I just point and shoot, it's gonna automatically focus on my subject and it will prioritize faces in the scene by default and you can see the IAF is working. You can see the little green square on the eye. Works pretty darn good. And then you can use these shortcut buttons like this FN button which stands for the function button. It'll bring up this function menu and this function menu changes depending on what mode you're in. You've got all these different modes here. Auto, scene mode, panorama mode, high frame rate shooting, movie mode, memory recall mode, manual mode, shutter priority mode, aperture priority mode and program auto mode. So again, lots of ways to use the camera depending on what your skill level is and depending on what features you would like to have the camera optimized for. That's basically what this mode dial is for. Now up here you also have the zoom lever like so, but you can also zoom using the ring on the lens. And if you're in other modes like aperture priority mode for example, this ring will then change your aperture. 
And if you're in shutter priority mode, this will change your shutter speed. But in full auto mode, it acts as zoom. And if you're new to this camera and you're just trying to get good pictures and whatnot, I recommend just putting it in full auto mode for now. And then as you learn more, you can move into the other modes and get more out of this camera. And I just recommend watching some of my videos and you'll see exactly what I mean. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. I just want to go over some of the lab testing for those interested in that sort of thing. And what we got here is just a basic zoom range test. So this is at nine millimeter or the equivalent 24 millimeter range. And then you zoom in a little bit. This is at 19 millimeter, because remember the lens is nine millimeter to 72 millimeter. That works out to 24 to 200 effective. So this is 19 millimeter, zoomed in a little more, 36 millimeter and 200 millimeter or approximately 72 millimeter. So it's a pretty awesome zoom range to say the least. Now let's go over the ISO settings here. So you could see at ISO 100, you got really sharp corner to corner performance here. This is at f5.6. I actually stopped it down a little bit. What I want to show you is the ISO. So let me just move up here to 200, 400. Let me show you what it looks like at 400. And you can see the images are extremely clean at 400. Now we're looking at 800. You can start to see a little bit of noise creeping in in the shadow area, but again, really clean still. Now this is at ISO 1600. And again, really clean. You can definitely start to see some of the noise coming in and the shadow areas more particularly. It gets a little bit muddy down here on the fine detail areas, but if you look at the dollar bill and the crayons, the results are still really good. This is very impressive, totally usable in my opinion for most stuff. Now 3200 is where we start to cross the line as to usability for high quality purposes. It's kind of getting a little bit noisy here and a little bit too muddy to be using depending on what you're doing. But again, if you're just sharing on the web, as you can see when you pan out, the image still looks fantastic overall. Now 6400 is a huge drop in quality, as you can see here. Now the colors start to shift and the noise is really apparent. So once the color shift happens, that's when it's really like, you don't really want to go that high. And now you're looking at 12,800, which is the max ISO for this particular camera. And you can see here again, the color shift is quite drastic. Now I just wanted to show you some minimum focus distance testing so you can see how the background bouquet balls render and how the scene in the background renders in such a scenario. So this is at f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8, and f11. So you could see there, it does a pretty good job. Now zoomed in, this is at the effective 200 millimeter range. I do basically the same test at the minimum focus distance. So if we stop it down, you can see the bouquet balls change. And you know, it's not the most killer bouquet at a focus area, but it's nice, they're fairly round. And when it comes to real world photography, the results are quite good, as you will see in a minute. Okay guys, so now I just wanted to go over some real world photography. To start things off, I just stopped at a uh, one of those farmer's markets. I wanted to pick up some stuff for dinner. And I took a couple of snapshots along the way of this church, and you can see just what kind of range you get here zoomed all the way out. I got the wide angle shot of the church and then zoomed in from a different area. I zoomed in on the top there and that's not even all the way. That's only about halfway, about a hundred some odd millimeter effective. Here's just some killer looking peppers, some awesome mushrooms. Again, the camera just does a great job. Color, clarity, range, versatility. It's a lot of fun. Jace broke his second board at Taekwondo because he's uh, moving up in his belt rankings and I took a shot outside Taekwondo, I used the on-camera flash here, and you can see the camera did a phenomenal job. Focused on the eyes, filled in the shadows quite good using the on-camera flash, and I was happy with this result. Moving on here, just playing some Django with the kids. I was like, oh, here's a good opportunity for a photo. Again, a nice wide-angle shot of the Django block, and here's an image of Layla putting one on top there. We had a really good game. My parents just got a new puppy. Adorable. Jasmine is her name. So I just took a couple of snapshots and you can see here this nice 3D imagery you're getting. I was zoomed all the way in at an effective 200 millimeter. The house in the background is nice and out of focus and the dog is crisp and sharp. And unfortunately the leash is there kind of ruining the shot. Here's a more wide angle view of the dog, nine millimeter, nice and close. 
the Animal IAF worked flawlessly. Now this one I took of Jasmine sitting on my lap. I had the camera resting on my knee in selfie mode and was able to capture this image with ease because it focused automatically on the eye. Now the ISO is pretty high here, ISO 1250. A little bit noisy here, if you zoom in, you can see the grain in the fur and stuff like that. And I also edited it a little bit because it was a raw file, so I pushed the envelope a little bit, which also adds a little bit of noise. But at the end of the day, this image came out great and it'll look terrific as a four by six print, an eight by 10 print even, and great for sharing on the web, social media, things like that. Landscapes, down at the Basher Kill, this is a raw photo. You can see the dynamic range is quite good that this sensor is capable of capturing. And here's one that I edited a little bit, and you can see it came out quite good. Decent dynamic range there. Now a sports shooting, I took a ton of photos of Layla riding her bike towards me, and I was at the maximum 72 millimeter effective 200 millimeter range, and she was just riding her bike towards me, and every shot, sharp, 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 it just kept focusing on the eye, even when she got really close to me, and I was super impressed. Same thing with Jace, he was riding his bike towards me, and just got a lot of sharp shots, pretty much 90% hit rate, I would say. I was extremely impressed with that. Now here's just a shot on the Streets of Liberty, zoomed in, quick range test of this bus, zoomed all the way into 72 millimeter, and this is zoomed out at nine millimeter. So you can see just what kind of incredible range this lens offers. And again, another example of the dynamic range. You can see the highlight detail is there, the shadow detail is there, very impressive. A Couple more shots, I actually slowed the shutter down for this particular shot of Layla, and this is in JPEG mode. And you can see at 1 60th of a second, the tires are uh, nice and blurry from the motion. But you can see, it tracked Layla, focused on her eye. Incredible. And just a quick zoom here on Jace. Got a cool haircut the other day, and I was just taking pictures. And you can see, did a really nice job there. The colors look great. Here's one of Layla. Here's another one of Jace. And you can see just how sharp those eyes are. The background out of focus area is excellent. Nice 3D looking image. In incredibly impressive for such an ultra compact camera, in my opinion. Another one of Jace. Took some pictures of my buddy's car the other day. Here's just a picture of the grill. Now this was just a candy bowl I had on Lazy Susan, and I was spinning it around with a slower shutter speed of one sixth of a second. Of course, I had the camera on a tripod for this, and I captured this cool spinny type photo. Just having some fun. Now this was a low light shot, so the ISO is very high, ISO 6400. And you can see it looks pretty good overall, like the depth of field fall off and stuff, but when you zoom in, you can definitely see the noise there. Quite a bit of noise, but you know, at the end of the day, it was still a good photo. I was happy with the result considering how low the light was in this restaurant. Now I was at the minimum focus distance for this fall foliage type shot, and you can see just the sharpness and clarity on that leaf is phenomenal, and the background out of focus area looks really good. So a, a just super good usable image and something that anybody can take. You know, here's another one. And again, the background out of focus area I thought looked phenomenal. The sun's back there, there was a tree and just a nice looking 3D type shot. Another landscape image, a few more. And we went to this really awesome restaurant for my parents' 50th anniversary. It's called Vesuvio's in Newburgh, New York. It was really good Italian food. And I just took a couple of pictures. Here's an on-camera flash shot, ISO 400. And you can see my wonderful parents there. We had a really good time. Took a picture of the food. I mean, food photography. This camera is really versatile, really powerful. And you can see it, it just does a good job in a, just a variety of aspects. Went hiking with my buddy Jim. I got a bunch of hiking photos I wanted to show you because this was one of the best demonstrations of what this camera can do in the real world, in my opinion. Like hiking, you really don't want to carry a heavy camera and a camera like this is ideal for something like that. You get the 24 to 200 millimeter effective range and it's extremely lightweight. So you're not, there's no burden carrying the thing. And this was like a 10 mile hike and I'm not in the greatest shape, so I really did not want to carry my full frame equipment with me. So I took this one, and you can see here, I was using Auto HDR, incredibly powerful feature, and for not all these shots, but just these two in particular, and you can see that dynamic range captured, the color, it's nice and vivid and crisp, zoomed all the way in, you could see the view in the background there, that's the Hudson River, phenomenal. 
and I have a bunch of real HDR photos I'm going to show you in a minute. This is just auto HDR and just regular JPEGs and regular RAW files that I'm showing you in this real world segment. And again, just look at these shots. Auto pano, I was using panoramic mode for this one. Here's another panoramic in the wider panoramic version. Just killer. And then zoomed in on the rock, you could see the fall foliage out of focus. It just looks so good. Again, looking at the rock and the background, the trees are really far away. Just the fall foliage was absolutely incredible. We really went at the perfect time of year. Zoomed in to 200 millimeter. Look at that separation. I mean, that's a nice 3D looking shot. You wouldn't know that that was taken with such a relatively small sensor camera compared to a full frame camera. This looks like it was taken with a full frame camera. You can't even tell. It's one of those types of shots. And here's another photo of the North South Lake where we went hiking. Absolutely gorgeous. Just different focal ranges. This is at nine millimeter. This is at 20 millimeter. And this is at 56 millimeter. So all those different ranges from the, taken, all taken from the same exact spot. Another angle, the mountain house site. I have a whole article on my website with all these pictures with way more detail if you guys are interested in the history and stuff. I just wanted to show you in the real world what this can do. This is Boulder Rock. Again, just really, really good versatility this camera offers. Just one of those hold up the leaf pictures. Happy with those results. Amazing views. And we break for lunch here. These uh, egg corns were just sitting there, just asking to get their picture taken. And I really like the way this photo came out. Awesome background separation and so forth. Looking up, just looking at the leaves straight above me where I was sitting. Just incredible. Really good quality. And then we finally got to Caterskill Falls. And this was at the top of the waterfall. And uh, unfortunately, it wasn't really flowing too hard, but it was still really cool. And here's the river that feeds the waterfall. And looking down, it's a really high drop. And looking out from the waterfall, this is the view. Another angle looking down. And here's just one looking out here and then zoomed in. You could see those people in the distance at the edge of the waterfall and then zoomed in. That's what kind of range you get. Absolutely incredible range this lens offers. And here's an artist painting the waterfall. All right, so I just wanted to show you some HDR photography. Now, I did take auto HDR photos, and I also took real HDR photos, which is multiple exposures. And I have a tutorial on that if you want to learn more about HDR photography using the RX100 Mark VII. So be sure to check out that tutorial if you're interested in creating some HDR high dynamic range photos like this. Now, this was down at the Basher Kill. This is three exposures combined, and it creates a really awesome result like this. And here's another example. Now this is an auto HDR photo, so it's not quite as epic looking as the real HDRs, but it still does a great job when the dynamic range in a scene exceeds that of the sensor's ability with one click. So it basically takes three images, blends them together, and then pumps out a result like this. And here's another angle. This is my friend Adam's truck. It's called the Mona Lisa on Wheels. And I have a whole article dedicated to this particular truck on my website. I did a photo shoot for him. And if you want to see some more images of that truck, be sure to check that article out. I think you'll be amazed at how cool that truck is. In any event, here's a couple more frames using Auto HDR. Here's another one from the side. It's a 1937 GMC cab over. And the auto HDR function worked great for shots like this. I was also using my full frame Sony A7R for the more portrait pose type shots, but all these detail shots, I was using the RX100 Mark VII. It did a great job. Very happy with the results. And here you can see the dynamic range was really intense, but the auto HDR feature did a great job capturing the highlight detail and the shadow detail. Now on the hiking trip, I took a bunch of regular raw files so I could process them in HDR and here's one that I particularly like. Here's another image from the top of the waterfall. It came out pretty good. And here's another frame of the actual waterfall. I wish it was flowing a little harder but still came out pretty good. And here's just a regular exposure because I wanted to show you what the HDR looks like. Now I took three exposures at negative two, zero, and plus two EVs using a tripod and when blended together I got this result. So you can see what the HDR does. It brings back all that highlight detail 
and the shadow detail and gives you a really killer result. Here's another example. This is just a regular exposure. And then here is the HDR. A regular exposure. And here is the HDR. Again, it just really turns the shot into something special. Another example. And here's the last one. So you can see, it really just makes it that much more cool. You know, so that's pretty much some HDR photo samples. Now let's get on to some sample video and I'll show you some sample time lapse and then we will conclude this review. I'm actually using a gimbal right now. It's working pretty good. This is the uh, gimbal I'm just playing around with. It seems to be working pretty good so far. It took me a minute to set it up. But it's at ISO 1600 right now. Let's see how it works going up these stairs. Round and round we go. It's at ISO 6400 right now. ISO 4000. Now this has a little thing where I can aim it down. Now if the background's really far away, you know, you can definitely get some separation. But if you look at this, like with these weeds right behind me, you know, they're not blurry or anything. They're pretty, pretty in focus. And you know, that's at the f2.8 max aperture. I'm impressed with it. It's really easy to hold, especially out like this. This is one huge advantage to this camera because even the a6400 is pretty lightweight, but once you start putting some larger aperture lenses on there, it's gonna start to get heavy and your shoulder's gonna start burning, you know? So you gotta keep that in mind. It's one huge advantage to a smaller 
compact camera like this. <laughs> yeah, but he's got a cool Spider-Man helmet, you gotta admit. But he never used to be going faster and seeing his webs everywhere. Whoa, crazy. Crazy haircut. Crazy haircut. Perfect. Alright, show me your axe kick, buddy. Oh my goodness, crazy. You wanna see one where I go even higher than that? Yeah. Whoa! All right, show me your punch, show me your punch. Oh, crazy power. All right, how about the spin around chop? Whoa. <laughs> I would not want to get chopped in the neck by you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so impressed, so impressed. All right, fighting stance, fighting stance. Nice. Switch stances. Nice. All right, buddy. Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps up my Sony RX100 Mark VII review and as I tried to get across in this video as best I can, this is a pro-grade ultra compact camera and it's super versatile with that 24 to 200 millimeter zoom range. It has killer 4K video, it has class leading autofocus performance, A9 type specs with the 20 frames per second blackout free shooting. It's pretty much like the best you can get in an ultra compact form factor. Some of the negatives, as I already discussed, it doesn't have weather sealing, you know, so this isn't really the most rugged camera. You're not gonna wanna drop this camera or put it underwater like some of the tough cameras out there, but it has a large one inch sensor, so you can get some pretty good separation from your subject to the background, and the image quality is very good. It's even in low light, the image quality is quite good. Not as good as some of the larger sensor cameras, of course, or cameras with faster lenses, because remember, this is an f2.8 max aperture on this particular lens. The Mark V has an f1.8 max aperture, which is a little bit better for low light photography. Another advantage I want to tell you real quick, this does have active mode when recording in 4K video, which makes it significantly better when hand holding for vlogging purposes in particular, but you know, recording video while the camera is moving, the active mode wasn't available on 4K quality in the previous generation, but it is available 
on the Mark 7, and it does make a significant difference. If you guys have questions, please feel free to ask below the video. I'm happy to help, and I usually cover a little bit more how-to type stuff in my reviews, but this time I created separate videos for that, and they're really, really thorough. So be sure to check out all the how-to videos I created. They're all linked below the video in the description area. And I also just wanted to recommend a couple of accessories if you're looking and you don't really know what to get. I used a few during this review process, and in particular, I really like this VCT SG R1 grip. It is a little bit small, but it has the controls here to take a photo, record video, and zoom in and out. So when you're holding the camera, you can basically just hit those buttons while you're holding, and you don't have to use your other hand, or you don't have to do this and be awkward. They're right there at your thumb. And this thing, actually, you can rotate it, and it turns into a little tripod as well. So you can put it on top of a table if you're doing an interview, you know, recording or something like that. So it's a really nice accessory, and, you know, like I said, depending on your needs, it might be something you're not aware of, and I just wanted to make you aware of it. It actually connects with this USB cable, and that's how you can control the camera. Now, a couple other things I just wanted to show you quick is the grip. It's the AGR2 grip. And you can see there, it'll help give you a little bit better ergonomics. And it actually like glues onto the camera, so it's not something you can take on and off easily, but it does significantly improve the ergonomics. Another thing Sony offers is this really nice case here. It's like a soft leather case. Now, this case is really nice, but if you put this on there, it's not going to fit in there. So that's worth keeping in mind. If you have the little grip on there, it's not going to fit inside this. But it's, it's another nice option if you're not interested in that ergonomic grip there. So then as far as audio goes, what I was recording with this whole time was the Rode. And it's a video micro, they call it. It's a really excellent mic. I used it on the RX100 Mark 7. And I actually, what I did was, because there's no hot shoe mount on the RX100, you basically need a solution to mount the mic. So what I did was... I, I use this bar here from it's from a company called Velo and you basically just screw this to the bottom of the camera it has a thread right here you screw it to the bottom of the camera like so and then you can put the grip to the bottom of this screw and then you have a spot here for the mic and the mic would just mount right there I'll show you a picture of it of what it looks like all set up but that's the solution you just need a rig like this and you attach this to the camera and then that gives you this hot shoe option to put a flash unit on or a microphone and stuff and there's several solutions to this problem you can actually get a whole cage for your camera and stuff like that but this is a really affordable solution so i just wanted to make you guys aware of that i really hope you got what you were looking for in this review and please be sure to check out the website sonyalphalab.com below the video in the description area will be all the links to the other tutorials and again i'm always happy to help so if you guys have questions concerns comments whatever below the video and uh, I'll get back to you. I love reading them. So I, I really hope you guys have a great day. I will catch up with you next time and stay tuned for the next review.